so chapter 15, we did Venn diagrams yesterday. It's one strategy, right? Um, the problem with chapter 15 is that there's just a lot of different strategies going on. So tomorrow we're going to do a lot of them that just seem like they're not related, and then that way you guys can practice a bunch of different stuff. But today we're talking conditional probability. So, in chapter 3, we had contingency tables, which is what's on the screen. It's just a table of a bunch of different results where you have two categorical variables. So in this one, it was a gender versus what their goal in school was. That they want them to be good, have good grades, be popular, or be good at sports. Whatever. What kind of questions are those? I don't know. Anyway, so um, we were finding probabilities. We just didn't call them that. We called them relative frequency. So you guys can do all of these. Like these aren't hard. I won't do all of them. I'll just do one just to make sure we know what we're talking about. But it says, for example, um, if we select a student at random from the study, the probability we select a girl, well, you find the total number of girls. And then you divide by the total number of people. Right? And then it works for more complicated events. So what's probably selecting a girl whose goal is to be popular? So girl and popular. Well, there's 91 girls that want to be popular out of everybody. We could keep doing these things, right? It's like we can find stuff. Well, a table is really helpful for finding these conditional probabilities. So, for example, um, what if we wanted to find the probability that a student wants to excel at sports given that we have selected a girl? So, so far we've been taking it out of everybody, the 478. But this is narrowing that focus. It's say, saying that we have already selected a girl. So, that means we're going to narrow what we're doing. So, we do the probability of sports given a girl. So this is the proper notation. That just means given. And from the table, it's really easy. We find the number of people, number of the students that when we wanted to be good at sports and our girls, which was 30, right? But this time, it was given that it was a girl. So we're only taking it out of the total girls. So it's out of 251. So 30 of 251 is 0.12. So the table, that's really easy. It's not a problem. The problem comes when you don't have a table, and they just give you a bunch of probabilities. You should still be able to find that stuff. So we have this nice rule. So when we ha want the probability of it from a conditional distribution, we write probability of B given A. That's this notation. And that's called a conditional probability. And so we have a formula for that. And it says the probability of B given A equals the probability of their intersection over the probability of what was already given. So that's what we did in that table for the sports given a girl. The top was both sports and girl, and the bottom was just girls. So this is on the AP stats formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. But the letters are swapped. So it says the probability of A given B equals the probability of the intersection over the probability of B. It's the same thing, but I didn't tell anyone that, year, last, that last year. And so on the test and quizzes, when I got that, they freaked out because they were confused. It's the same thing, though. So for example, earlier in the chapter, it said they had a survey. And they found that 56% of college students live on campus. 62% have a campus meal program, and 42% do both. We can make a Venn diagram of that, but it won't help us answer this question. So while dining in a campus facility open only to students with meal plans, you meet someone interesting. What is the probability that your new acquaintance lives on campus? So it doesn't say the word given anywhere, but it is given, right? What did we limit the population to? Only students with meal plans. So probably they live on campus given they have a meal plan. Does 
that makes sense. So it limited that population for us. So we're going to use the formula because I don't have a nice table to figure this one out. So we do the probability of both. So what's the probability that they had both a meal plan and they, they live on campus? 0.42. And then you put that over the probability that they had a meal plan, which in this question was 0.62. And we divide that out and you get 0 0.6. 677. So you're given probabilities this time, you just stick them into the formula, make it work. All right, so I'm going to do a couple more examples from the homework so that no one gets confused. And then we'll, we can see how everything's going when I give you the assignment. So on page 362, should have taken a screenshot of these, but I didn't. Let's look at number eight and nine. Number eight is about pets. And it says, in, a, in its monthly report, the local animal shelter states that it currently has 24 dogs and 18 cats available. Eight of the dogs and six of the cats are male. Find each of the following conditional probabilities if an animal is selected at random. So some people are really great at this, and I'm so proud of them, and they don't have to use the formula, and that's awesome. I'm going to use the formula so I know I don't mess anything up. So like on part A, it says find the probability that the pet is male given that it's a cat. So probably it's male given cat. So if we follow that formula, it's male and cat over the probability that it's a cat. Now you have to remember this is out of the total animals at the shelter. So there were 24 dogs and 18 cats, so there were 42 animals total. So it's important to know. So how many of these animals out of 42 are male and cat? So you have six out of 42. And then how many um, of the animals are cats? So out of how many are just cats? 18. So you have 18 out of 42. Now, some people don't have to do that, and they could be like, okay, male, given that it's cat, well, there's six cats, and there's 18 cats, so it's six out of 18. I get that. Practicing with the formula is what you get. It's designed so that those 42s cancel out. Now, they don't cancel out because they're over each other. I've seen so many algebra craziness lately in pre-cal. It's because you'd multiply by the reciprocal, and they would cancel out. So you have 6 over 18, which is just one-third. Do you have to use the formula? Not necessarily. You do need to give me the notation. Okay? Um, it doesn't really matter. Like, this one's easy. It's one-third. You reduce the fraction. If you put it at or other ones, it should come as decimals. It doesn't matter. Um, let's look at number nine. So on number nine, it gives you this table. The probably is an adult American man has high blood pressure and or high cholesterol shown on the table. So high, okay, high. Point one one, one six. So this is from the book. I just didn't take a screenshot of it. So there's your table. And so in part A, it says, what's the probability that a man has both conditions, both high blood pressure and high cholesterol? That's not a given. That's just a normal probability. And the table is probability. So what's the probability of having a high blood pressure and high cholesterol? Point one one. It's just the intersection, right, of those two. No big deal. <coughs> On part B, it asks the probability that a man has high blood pressure. This is where this gets confusing because the table doesn't give you any totals, and you should think through it. High blood pressure is everything in this column, right? It's not just point one one. 
It's everything in that column. So you would add those together. If they were nice and gave you the totals ahead of time, you wouldn't be as confused probably. You do 0.11 plus 0.27. It's just all those people in that column. Probably the high blood pressure would be high blood pressure with high cholesterol or high blood pressure with okay cholesterol, right? It's just high blood pressure is the only thing we're looking at. Sorry, that's supposed to be 0.16 and you get 0.27. Sorry. <laughs> but then on C, just like our book does, it like to lead you into problems. C, A and B is going to lead you into C. So C says the probability a man with high blood pressure has high cholesterol. It doesn't say given, but it means given. Because it's telling you a man with high blood pressure. So it's limiting your people to people with high blood pressure, right? So high cholesterol given high BP. Well, if we follow that formula that we've been talking about, you do the probability of both over the probability of a high BP. Well, we already found both of these probabilities in A and B. So what's the probability of having both high blood pressure and high cholesterol? Right. And what's the probability of it just having a high BP? Right. And so then you just divide them. And so you end up getting 0 0.407. So all the homework questions are just like that. They're giving you something. They're ma maybe masking the part that's given. And you should be really careful about reading it. So like on a question later, talk about Democrats and Republicans, death penalty, favor or post. But one of them says a Republican favors the death, death penalty. That's limiting who you're pulling from from the Republicans. So that's given, even though it's very subtle. So that's the worst part about this. You have to be careful about what the words mean. Okay?